well. That was awful. Bottle jobs. Understatement. <laughs> I think that's been the whole season, really. Yeah. From October on was. Well, no, we had a, we had a decent start, but yeah, I have no idea what that was. I mean, there was absolutely no urgency whatsoever in that in that entire game. We could have been playing for another <laughs> for another 90 minutes, wouldn't score. It was it was absolutely awful. I I think the team that he put out it was just random. I don't know why he started McGavin. I guess it's good for him, obviously, because he's a youngster, but. To, to start him and without a league start, I think was was strange. I don't know what the formation was. I think from the start it was three at the back, um, but you know it was awful. I basically watched 90 minutes of a massive centre back winning headers. That's literally what it was. I think he was the man, the match perfect. Honest. He won everything. Yeah, but I think the season's now over. Has to be over now. I think yeah. it's just how far will it's just now fall. Yeah, I think so. I think playoffs. It, it's it's just looking awful now. I don't think playoffs are possible. And you know, I, I said yesterday um, that it was crunch time, and we, we've just we've bottled it once again in a massive game. We cannot beat teams that are around us, and it's so frustrating. Um, and you know, the fans are turned now, and I don't know how it's going to go from here. It seems like it's now gone back to McCarthy days. It's now so toxic, and I was just like, all right, okay, yeah. this is serious. You know, there's chancing Lambert out, and Evans out. I think we all have to agree about that. There's, there's no, and there was banners up as well. But yeah, will will anything come from this? Will they? I don't know. I guess I don't. I don't think we're going to go any, go anywhere this year. So we're going to have to wait until next season. Summer's going to be an important one. It's going to be hard to keep some of our better players. Um, so I guess we'll see next year. But it's not looking good. Well, I don't know what to say really. It's just disappointment supporting Ipswich Town at the moment, really. And I tell you what, tonight is just the icing on the cake, really. I've come every week since the start of the season, and tonight you've really seen that Paul Lambert has lost the dressing room, really. He doesn't really know what he's doing tactically. And it just seems like a raffle every week. Who's going to play? Who's not going to play? And it just doesn't seem like he's got any game plan. And look, you've seen me since Germany. And at the start of Germany, I saw a spark. And I genuinely did see a spark supporting Ipswich. And I thought, do you know what? We've got a chance this year. And September went by. We saw some wins. And I thought, do you know what? These one nils scraping it. You see, you see us winning one nil, And you think, do you know what? We've genuinely got a chance going up this season. But after October, it, it started going downhill. It started going downhill. And you start seeing the nil nils, And you start seeing the one nil defeats. And you think, we'll get over it. It's just a... It's just a double spell in form, but those nil nils, the one nils, they went into five. Was it five three at Lincoln? Was it five three? It was five three at Lincoln, and then you see the, the defeats. They start creeping in. You think, Do you know what? We'll give Lambert a chance. And then just before the Wiccan game, you see a five year new deal. Five years was it? It was five years, wasn't it? It was five years. You see a five year new deal come in, and you think, what the hell? Why are we? Why are we awarding the manager a five? five-year new deal when he's out of form you see Gareth Ainsworth he's just been given a two-year new deal why is he getting a two-year new deal when our manager's getting a five-year new deal and where are Wickham in the league they're third in the league and we're tenth and Lambert's getting a five-year new deal and do you know what it just it was just town football club I've got a soft spot for managers and it's and it's always been that way we've always given the manager a chance we've always given the owner a chance and something's got to change and it has got to change because if it doesn't change then we're just going to be sitting in league one possibly league two because if you put that team in league two i can't see that team going up because there's not enough winners in that team and then there's not enough and that's all i can say really there's not enough winners in the team nothing you couldn't expect before the kickoff is here you sat in the pub beforehand and said that's a disjointed team selection, random people just coming in, and I've got nothing against McGavin. I thought he played well, and I thought it was unfortunate to go for half-time. But you, you look at it before, before the game, and you knew that was going to happen. Um, how many changes? Another change of formation. Um, you go over and over and over and over again. The, the, this entire mess lands on Lambert's door. And at the end, and I think it's unfortunate, there's a whole load of people going on off at Evans. Good luck finding some of the hundred million pound to piss down the toilet. Um, some people having a go at the uh, at the players. The players, with the exception, I think, perhaps of Garber, who pulled out of a couple of things. Generally, they've put the effort in, they've run, and they're hurting at the end of it. 
But if you're changing formations, you're changing players, I mean, that midfield hasn't ever played together. How can you, ex how can you bring Dizel in, who we've been crying out for his creativity for weeks, he just suddenly comes in, alongside Nola, alongside McGavin, who hasn't been seen since Colchester, and expect them to gel? It's the same when we randomly played three strikers in the same pair of boots earlier in the season for half a game, and then we never saw those three together again. We've got the biggest squad, we've got the highest paid squad, we've got a squad that where Lambert's been backed again, and they're not performing because every single game is random. Donassian comes back in. What? He didn't do anything wrong before. Now he's back in, a right back played quite well. Shame Judge couldn't stay in this position in the second half because Donassian kept coming forward and finding a space. Oh, nobody there because Dena Judge has wandered off to have a picnic at left back. It, it is entirely about Lambert. You look at what M McCarthy did when he came in and he organised the side. We were adrift at the bottom after ju uh, under Jewel, hemorrhaging goals. McCarthy came in, changed tightened up, same set of players, were a different side, couldn't be beaten. Lambert's come in, done a different thing, got relegated, came in at the same point McCarthy did, with no effect. Lambert's now sitting there with a large squad and he's not organising events. Same basic things time and time again, losing runners, playing people on side, just drifting randomly into positions all over the place. That's coaching. The team selections is Lambert. The substitutions are Lambert. The fact that Judge is allowed to do whatever he likes for some obscure reason. I can't just wander around going, now I'm going to do something different today, don't fancy it. Judge seems to be able to. It, you've got roles on the pitch. Do the simple things. It's what Wilson does. Wilson is not a limited defender, but he does simple things well. Just clears his lines. And that's sort of what you want from the rest of the team. Organise the defence, pass the ball forward from midfield. Dazelle did it, he was a bright spot today. Sears came on and made a difference. Keane can't play as a lone striker. Everybody in the sta stadium, even those who don't like Keane, will concede that he can't do it as a lone striker. And there he is, lone striker again. And a, judge can't play as a shadow striker. It's not his thing. I, I mean, I would argue that it's a bit like Jonathan Douglas. We've seen the best of him and it was at a different club. Um, Dobra needed to play. Nolan didn't need to play. Nolan, like the rest of Hurst's signings, it, it, why? Um, he's one of those needs clearing out. For me, the only one of um, Hurst's signings who's worth anything is Donassian, who's got a, hard, got a rough end of the stick all the way through. I think it's unfortunate. I expect more of the same against Coventry. 10 o'clock, 3rd of March, and we've just witnessed the sailing of HMS. Biggest screw-up of season ever. Um, Oh, I can't believe it really. Um, <laughs> I know in a way Lambert was kind of forced in one or two changes there. I know Hughes is out, Scoose is out, but at the same time six changes today from a side that dominated at Blackpool, let's say. Um, you know, we, we brought Dobber on at half time as well. He looked like really promising, didn't start. He's played, he's dropped, um, yeah, sorry, he's played start Judge who like was he behind Keane, which I guess he was, but it didn't work with Keane up front on his own. We all know that Keane is not a lone striker. I've said it plenty of times. He's not a lone striker. He needs someone up top with him, and which Judge kind of did kind of play beside him, but a bit behind. But at the same time, that doesn't work. And kind of two kind of similar players there. For me, you keep Sears on, or you start Simpson against that tower of a defence of number six, who, ironically, got cheers <laughs> second half because we were just hoofing up to our strikers which is back to how we did it under Mick and it was just a case of losing it straight away and because he was just heading it away and back to there then we went and on the counter or we'd get the ball and then start passing it around and then go back to Holy again and then it'd be the same again so nothing there really um, I don't get why Simpson didn't start I don't really get why Sears was dropped I know he's not fully fit but at the same time we should have played two strikers today could have been it's been more promising we had more perhaps more creativity but that first half was absolutely dreadful um, they started out and there just seemed to be no enthusiasm nothing I don't know whether Lambert's lost the dressing room it looks certainly looks like it ha like he has um, which I don't really blame him to be honest because he's absolutely inept isn't he I mean today we talk about him having no plan B but where was plan A where did what was plan A today first half they just started and just didn't really get going until which 
has happened before in this, this season. They score and we wake up. It's too late. <laughs> but especially when we've got a limited resource of strikers, we've got a limited number of goals in that team already. So you go 1-0 down at, at home to Fleetwood, who are on form at the moment, probably the informed team at the moment. And then you expect to get something back and wake up when you're 1-0 down. It's not, it's not right. Not at all. It's, it's not going to happen. Um, judge for me today, lost again like he does. Just played on the right in the second half and he just wanders. And it's, it's just back to, sort of back to the start of the season under him. So that's, that's no good. Garbert on the left, he looked better second half. Back in his that sort of left midfield position. But by then it was too late. Um, McGavin, I feel sorry for McGavin really. Um, brought in today. Lambert said earlier this week he wasn't going to sort of throw Dobber and Simpson on in the deep end but today he's kind of throwing a player who hasn't played in the league this season <laughs> he's thrown him in the deep end I know he has kind of had he hasn't had the chance to have the he hasn't had the player stay you know they say who's scoose they're injured Downs are suspended but why not change it to at least if you want to play judge do a 4-3-1-2 with two strikers judge behind and just play Nolan in the middle with Garber and, I don't know, Dobber on the right or whoever you want to play on the right, it doesn't matter. We've got the players there to do that kind of formation or stick with 4-3-3 three, three and go with that somehow. But he, he hasn't and he's just completely changed it. He's stuck with his 3-5-2, which for today we didn't have the resources to do and we've gone and lost and the season's done. <laughs> it was done Saturday, to be honest, but it's done today. Right, Nigel, uh, here again uh, at the end of um, what was, again, another must-win game for town. Um, it's shocking being a town supporter, really. We we really struggle at times um, and, and what we get put through. Um, line-up was a bit strange uh, to start off with tonight. I heard good things about the Blackpool um, game on Saturday in terms that the 4-3-3 was working well. And then we started to move to wing-backs tonight. So another change for town with two youngsters coming in as well um, I thought Brett McGavin he, he is a lot stronger than he actually looks when he's on the pitch um, but we are so slow so slow as a team I've, 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 I've said this a number of times in terms of our attacks coming forward um, you know we just we just struggle to, to get the ball and then start passing and move forward quickly um, even at the, at the back when we get it people aren't pushing out quick enough um, you know, there's no pattern to our to our play at all, and and no intensity. The players are just far too comfortable with, with what's going on, um, and and just seem to struggle to get forward and, and make some good good moves. Really, I thought Dazelle, um back in the team, he's hardly played all season, um, so I do have some sympathy there. But we only see glimpses of of his potential. You know, 30 seconds at a time, we see an odd good run and a and a, and a good pass through. But he really needs to be taking the game by the, the scruff of the neck now. You know, we can't keep calling these, these players youngsters all the time. If they're good enough, they're old enough to, to play in the team. Forget the fact they're youngsters. Um, you know, they need to be stepping up, and, and especially at this, this level as well. Um, second half we saw Sears come on that was a little bit brighter at that point and um, we also saw Bishop come on again a little bit brighter but so frustrating that we just saw Holy pumping the ball down the pitch time after time and all their defender had to do was just stand there and head it back again um, to the cheers from the town fans every every time he did it um, the, the atmosphere in the ground is is not great as well at the moment um, you know as soon, soon as the goal went in um, you you know, the fans were starting to get on the back but there's there's no um thought really as to whether this is aimed at Evans there was some chance towards him some chance aimed at Lambert but the players the number of individual errors that they're making and, and poor control as well and kicking the ball out is is not great and the players as I've said a number of times need to um, step up and take a lot of responsibility here for, for what's going on Lambert can put a, a team out in a formation but the the players need to be um, stepping up and actually trying to put that um, into action so it's a mix of Lambert and the players for me as to, to this. 
I can't really put my finger on where we where we go from here. Um, if someone tells me that the next match is a must-win game, I think I'm going to go completely mad because it seems like the last 10 games have uh, <laughs> have all been uh, must-win games for town, and um, we've struggled in all of them. Um, for the first time on Saturday, I actually started to look at the bottom of the table to see how far away we were, and actually it shows how poor this league is that, that we are still some distance from right near the bottom of the table despite having won very few matches um, recently um, really depressing probably the best thing for me tonight was my KFC I had for tea that was the most enjoyable part of the evening for me I probably could have been uh, uh, at home watching MasterChef or something like that um, so I think for me the night's over I'm gonna go just a big plug for the Kings of Anglia magazine that's out today so we can get that from the from the uh, store here I think I'm gonna go home and read that before I get to bed tonight Utterly dreadful. I don't think there's many other words to describe that. Um, the players have to take some responsibility, but I think a lot of this has to rest on Lambert's shoulders. He played a 4-3-3 on Saturday, and they looked quite good against Blackpool. OK, didn't get the result, but at least there was something there. There was an attacking spark to them created chances and had they defended better probably should have won that game today he's changed the formation again he's it's almost like a lottery really of of who he's going to be picking out this week Danassian didn't think he had a bad game but I mean he's hardly featured in the last few games so he suddenly plucked out and then the Brett McGavin one I don't know where that came from that was well left field but for me, I, I cannot work out that playing so well for half an hour at the end of that Blackpool game and he doesn't play at all tonight, Dobra. I, I, I can't work out what Lambert didn't see in Dobra after the cameo he had on Saturday. Um, but totally deserved. I mean, it was an awful game. Fleetwood got the goal and didn't need to do anything more than that um, and could see that we were terrible um, but brainless football absolutely brainless I mean clearing the ball and hitting the tallest player on the pitch all night it, it, it's just absolute I mean Will Keane he didn't get in the game but how can he when you've got that ball being pinged to a giant in Harry Souter at the back, who, by the way, was immense. And, I mean, if Town have any money, maybe they should be looking for someone like him because um, he was rock solid tonight and Fleetwood have a very good defensive record, which probably is linked to him, but he'll probably go to a better club than Ipswich. Um, but overall... There's not a lot you can say. That's that's it. Um, I can't see there being that many there on Saturday against Coventry, and I can't uh, blame them. Um, absolutely dreadful for a must-win game. Uh, there's not much more to say really, other than I don't really know now what what we we will see in the coming weeks and months now towards the end of the season but it is going to be very very interesting I think with season ticket renewals coming up I mean the only chance I think Evans has now of even keeping half of the 19 and a half thousand that keep turning up this season then I'm afraid I think Lambert has to go but if Lambert's still in charge come next season, you, you're going to find that this place is going to become a ghost town again. And um, really, I, I, I don't know what the future holds. So pretty, pretty appalling night and sums up the season. Just pathetic, really. Better footballers, but playing League One players at their own game rather than trying to play at their game and frankly uh, I think we are deservedly where we are in the table and that's I'm afraid going to be where we are for a long time I think. <laughs>